All right, welcome to day three on our series on 3D modeling with drones. Today, we're going to look at some real life projects and examples. I'm talking to two people. Number one, Danny, he's all the way in Australia, and he's been doing 3D modeling for years on a bunch of different projects. You're going to hear from him in a sec. And then Ted Strazimiri, probably the smartest person I've ever met when it comes to 3D modeling and this type of work. He does tons of bridge inspections, and he's done 3D modeling and scans for so many other projects from building restorations, things like that. So we're going to dive into specific projects, talk about why people even wanted these things 3D modeled to begin with, uh, what they used to do, and then what some 3D models look like and what engineers are looking for whenever they have these things open. So with no further ado, let's dive in. So today I have with me Danny all the way from the other side of the world. So Danny, why don't you tell a bit about who you are, where are you from, what you do? Good day, everybody. I'm, I'm Danny. I'm from Sydney, Australia. And obviously I'm here because I fly drones and specialize in photogrammetry. I'm the general manager and chief pilot of Hoverscape. And the question we're answering today is what do people use 3D models for that are created with drones? What are the use cases? And I know you've done a lot of this work, so I figured you'd be a good person to answer this question. So kind of our bread and butter of these projects we've been working on lately are things like universities, which, you know, they're hundreds of years old, hundred years old here. Um, things like ports, you know, busy live active port environments, um, bridges, they're kind of the big projects we've been working on a lot, lot lately. When you're getting 3D models of universities, who is hiring you to do that and what are they even looking for? So a lot of the time for us, it's the actual university themselves or their maintenance teams, engineers and whatnot that realize that these buildings have been around for generations almost and they haven't really had much maintenance done to them. So a lot of people are just turning a blind eye. They're passing it to the next person that runs the departments. This is where we come in because scaffolding for these heritage buildings is astronomically expensive EWPs or elevated work platforms. Yeah, you, know, you can't get them everywhere where drones can pretty much get anywhere now, whether it be a M300, M400 flying around the big open areas or a small Skydio dipping between the trees. So mainly for their own documentation for inspection purposes? Pretty much, yeah. It's uh, we'll call it preventative maintenance. If they're modeling the buildings and you know creating these models early they can detect all the issues before they actually become an issue you know you got people you know thousands of people walking under these facades every day last thing you want something falling down on you know some some student all right so that's universities let's do the next one ports so i mean when i say who's hiring you obviously the port is hiring you but maybe like who within the port and what are they looking to to have you do and why so pretty much the same thing it's the ports themselves hiring us some of these wharfs that we've been working with um we're actually modeling underneath them. So we've made a, we'll call it a rover. Essentially goes on the water with the drone attached to it that actually models the underside of these wharfs because people haven't seen these areas for the yeah, same thing, decades, generations, and they're falling apart. Yeah, so we're, we're creating 3D models of the, the undersides, the top sides, their cranes, pretty much anything on their land just to keep on top of it because salt water corrosion is bad at the best of times. Now, is that mainly for stuff that's coming into contact with water or is that even things that are sort of a little bit more inshore, like tanks and things like that? Not so many tanks. Um, I'm yeah. guessing they must they must do their own thing for those kind of things. It's more the water side areas that we're dealing with. Okay. Um, anything that could have that salt water corrosion or falling apart or, you know, concrete that breaks because ships hit the fenders too hard, which I didn't realize is an actual thing that happens quite often. Okay, interesting. So getting a digital twin or just like a static documentation digitized of what the infrastructure is like so they can make plans to fix anything that's broken? Pretty much, yeah. And you know, they, they work on a, I think it's a 10-year life cycle. You know, they're fixing it fixing it now for in 10 years or they're rebuilding things and they're planning you know, years in advance. So okay. it definitely helps to have a 3D model there in, in that state. It was in that present time for anything else they need to plan in the future. Now for these, is it just like a one and done document it? hand it over or is there any, any analysis you're doing afterwards or do you come back like a year later? I guess, what does a typical life cycle of the relationship look like? Depending on the port environment and which asset it actually is itself, there is, there has been quite a few recaptures of these structures, you know, say we'll go in, model it a year later, they've already done the work to it. We'll come back, model it again. They can compare side by side for one to make sure they're actually getting what they pay for. Cause there's a lot of dodgy tradies out there, which yeah, it's like any industry, I guess. Mm, sure. Um, yeah, having that side by side model of the old and new definitely helps. And then they can plan off that as well, whether it be annotating to send to the contractors to say, hey, you need, you know, 20 square foot of concrete for this area. Well, the tradie can't argue that then. Well, that's great. All that. Okay. Just for sake of time, let's keep going. You had ports, universities, and bridges, which I know is a big one 
kind of all over the place for infrastructure. Tell me about bridges. Who's hiring you to, to, to do three miles of bridges? Same thing. The, the owners of the bridges, um, the rail companies are a big one because they have so many bridges you know, across rivers, across roads, all that, those kind of things. But they're always a hard environment to get to that not many people realize that you can fly drones. Because, you mm -hmm. know, your little Mavics and your whatever else, Autels, don't always fly in GPS-denied environments. Where this is where a little, this is a little plug to Skydio. Skydio is absolutely doing awesome in that environment because you've got GPS-denied capabilities. You've got high megapixel cameras with lighting on them. It, it just works perfectly. Um, yeah. Now, what are they looking for in the bridge? Just, again, just documenting the condition, making plans for maintenance, all that? Definitely. Um, so the older bridges that we're doing in Australia, they're, you know, they're rusted, they're falling apart. They've had floodwaters go through them. Funny enough, the older bridges are going better than the newer bridges, I feel. Um, they don't make them like they used to, as I say. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Um, but yeah, you'll have branches that are stuck under bridges from flood water that, you know, no one knew were there. Like these branches are wider than me and, you know, 20 foot, 20 foot long. So these are big, like, yeah. that's like big logs. Now, was that just yeah. can rot stuff out and extra water contact that they don't want? It's more, causes more damage. You know, if there's more water pushing against that, more build up causes issues in the bridge, it affects, it affects the structural integrity and it kind of just goes downhill from there. But if they can catch that, straight after a flood or after any kind of event, they bring the team in or remove it and it's finished. Cool. Now, is it mostly rail companies that are you're working with on bridges or is it any, I don't know what it's like in Australia for who maintains the roads and stuff over here. It's like each state department of transportation. I know in Canada, it's like the ministry of transportation. I don't know what it is for Australia. It's pretty much state by state basis. The, well, the state I live in, New South Wales, they've got their own drone team and they're awesome at what they do. They use their drones for you know, sending the drones kilometers down the road by BV loss to check for traffic incidents up the highways. And, you know, they're maintaining their own assets itself. But a lot of the stuff we do is more the, the smaller infrastructure, I guess, the sure. the rail companies, the the private owned areas. Okay, cool. Do they, do you know if they do also 3D models of their bridges? Um, From what I've seen, yeah. Um, they've actually got a whole fleet of Skydios, um, the S2s. I don't know if they use next X10s yet, but they're, they're doing okay. some pretty cool stuff. Like I know I've seen them actually on the news modeling the Sydney Harbour Bridge, which, you know, I'd like to say it's the most, icon most iconic bridge in Australia. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool. Awesome. Let's talk about each one of these. If they aren't going to use drones to do this, what do they end up doing? You know, I meant you mentioned with universities, it's scaffolding. Are they, was that what they were previously doing is just building up a bunch of scaffolding to these inspections? Pretty much, yeah. So one of the buildings we did at one of the universities, it would cost hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of dollars and weeks of time with multiple cranes to lift this lift the scaffold into the area to be able to build up to capture it. And we finished modeling the whole entire building within a day. So that's, that's you know, a day rate versus hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, we'll go like 99,000. Yeah. Uh, we're coming under your budget. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And then, you know, for bridges, uh, I'm somewhat familiar with what they do in the U.S. If they're not using drones, but do you know what it's like over there in Australia and, and how they would handle a bridge inspection without a drone? Kind of comparing yeah, so, old way, new way. So we actually did this comparison actually, but um, they've got this unit, a little a truck that drives across the bridge. They climb across this boom, down another boom, under the bridge. And they're doing that, you know, they might do one bridge every couple of days where we did four bridges in one day. And they're sticking a guy out on a boom arm. Yeah, especially you know, crock infested waters, uh, you know, busy, busy roads, like not my cup of tea. I'd rather send a drone. Yeah, interesting. And then the ports, you just said they just didn't even have anything to inspect. They just they didn't have the data or what would they do before? They'd send an engineer under there with a napkin and a pen and ho hopefully mark it exactly where the issues were. You know, where <laughs> Are you being serious? Like, yeah, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll hand you drawings and say, oh, this is the area you got to capture. And you can't even make out what it says. Where, you know, <laughs> so we've seen places where these piles that weigh tons, you know, the piles that hold up the walls, mm -hmm. they're held on by one bolt and they're just swinging in waves, like slowly swinging. And, you know, we're trying to avoid getting too close to them because, you know, they'd easily crush you. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's the old school way. It's old school versus new school. You're trying to convince these old engineers that this is now the future of digitizing. You know, the data doesn't lie where that little scribble you have on your phone or your napkin, it's, you know, that can be changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super interesting. Any last words before we go about 3D modeling that the people need to know? Get on top of it now because drones are becoming more and more automated that I don't think we'll be flying them manually very soon. Yep. And it's all about what? Just what you're doing with the data afterwards or what? Like where can the human it's, add yeah. the value? The What they're doing with the data afterwards, that's the that's the big the big ticket. All right. Well, thank you, Danny. Appreciate your thoughts and insight. And we'll, uh, maybe we'll have you on another one. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Thanks. All right, Ted. So we're here, Ted Strasimiri. You got a bridge. You've inspected a tons of bridges or done 3D models of tons of bridges. I think it would be interesting to talk through an example project, like just why people want to do 3D modeling of bridges, and then just look at some examples of what the what 3D model looks like 
and some of the use cases for it. I mean, it's taken a while for this to catch on, I think, because the value really starts to build up over time. I have always just been obsessed with creating 3D models. Um, so bridges kind of fell into my lap and it turns out that they're the hardest ones to, to get right. But really it's, it's fundamentally the same as mapping with the drone, you're taking pictures and those pictures are overlapping and then you're throwing them into photogrammetry. So a good example I like to use is this one here. I'll share my screen. You can take a look. This is uh, this is a bridge that's kind of nearby, um, about 30 minutes away from where I live. And this model uh, was created back in 2023. And I use the Skydio S2. And you've probably seen this bridge like on LinkedIn and some of the videos it's like become kind of a celebrity because it has a lot of damage on it. Like it's got, it's got a lot of stuff going on. It's very clear to see even from this stage, you know, the, the first time it's been captured that there is value in creating 3D models for this. And, you know, any engineer will look at this and, and, and see that because it's measurable. Right. So I also inspect bridges by flying around and just recording video, but that's not measurable. I, I can't, you can't, you know, understand what the volume of concrete that's uh, come off here is just by video alone. So now, if you, if you want that data, then 3D model is the way to go. I was going to ask a quick clarifying question. So yeah, uh, what caused you to go out to this bridge and do this model to begin with? Were you hired to do it or did you just do this for fun or uh, what was, what got you out here? Yeah, yeah, I was hired to inspect this by video. But when I went back the second time, so two years passed, and I had the X10, which is Skydio's newest drone. And there I am again, same bridge. I knew it turned out really great with the S2, and I wanted to um, see what the difference is. So I did a comparison scan. So the comparison scan, that's where like this really starts to make sense now. Because here, as you can see, we have on the left side, 2023 version. On the right side, the 2025 version, mm -hmm. and you can very quickly understand what's changed. Yeah, this is structured data. It's measurable. It's structured, and it becomes extremely clear when something has happened. For example, there's there's a few cases here actually that you'll see. Yep, that seems to be the same. So from 2023 to 2025, no change. But then you look up a little bit, and boom, that's a massive change. Like we're seeing mm -hmm. reinforcement, a huge piece of concrete fell off sometime between 23 and 25. And that could, this could be pretty concerning uh, and pretty, you know, interesting for the engineer to understand exactly how much of it has come off. Because again, it's a model, it's measurable. I can pull up exactly the amount of volume, the, the perimeter, the area, and, and take note of that year over year. So every time you add another sort of timeline, another uh, piece of, of data, another layer to the timeline, I should say you're getting more information about what the structure is experiencing due to the environment, due to the loads on it, and due to its age, of course. It's really hard to do this, or it's, you know, it's really hard to find a more efficient way of doing this, I would say, without missing stuff, because you're always going to be missing something if you're just relying on unstructured data, unless you're spending yeah. a ton of time looking through it. Yeah. Well, it's hard to get the side-by-side -side comparison if you're just like trying to watch one video and then you got like, all right, let me go find the next point in this video where they were here and like, yeah. it up, or just like photos or handwritten reports. Yeah. Really. And I'm not the engineer, right? So I'm not, I'm not in charge. I, I don't care how long it's going to take the engineer who does get the video that I, I recorded and has to sit there for like four hours of flying <laughs> around and, and then make these notes and then correlate it to like where on the bridge that is. Cause once you start going up close, it all looks the same. Like there's really no like reference of where you are. Plus you don't have GPS down there. So you don't even have like metadata in the photos of mm. where that photo was taken or it could be completely wrong so you don't want to make that mistake and that could force just a visit to the site anyways to, to, to correct those issues which is what I, we're trying to prevent i imagine their uh, engineers time is not super cheap either so it's probably nice yeah to save them some time exactly they got better things to do now i was gonna I was, my next i was gonna my next question is like when you do these models or some of this inspection work essentially this gets handed over to what are these civil or structural engineers and they go inspect yeah. to see if there's anything that needs to be remedied or fixed exactly exactly i mean they're the experts they're the doctors i'm just the like the mri technician x-ray tech yeah can, <laughs> yeah that's um I'm just pressing buttons and, you know, sending, you know, working my, my main priority is how do I make this information simple to disseminate and to explore for that end user so that they like the service, that's Sweet. the service I'm providing. 
And that's really what all DSPs are. Yep. Now, quick question. I don't you do I, I know you do a lot of bridges, right? Like how many how many bridges do you inspect like every year? How many 3D models are you making of bridges every year? Or every two years, I guess. Not not as many as bridges I inspect. So there's always sort of a break even point for this. Like if it's a small structure, there's really no need to do this um, mm. because it's pretty straightforward to correlate what you see in an image or video to where that is on the bridge. And typically they're going to be also easier to access closer to the ground, lower spans. So like small the, stuff, the usefulness of the drone goes down if it's really like a small bridge. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And then there's a lot of cases, like if you wanted to do this with a, with a smaller structure, you, you might actually be better off doing it from like a ground-based camera. It's like mm -hmm. you really needed to do a model of it. A ground-based camera can out-compete a drone in terms of efficiency and access in a lot of cases mm -hmm. in those situations. But for the bridges that are larger, you know, I would say that it's typically like a 50-50 mix of capturing like this maybe not mm -hmm. the entire bridge because that's a lot of work but i have done that too but maybe capturing sections of it and like high priority sections like this mm -hmm. and then doing the rest with that video workflow because i mean yeah. the more you do this and i would recommend everyone kind of gets up to speed and does some some of their own learning on just structural engineering as it relates to bridges because it really helps to understand where the critical areas are right where, where if something cracks or breaks off like alarm bells are ringing and people are yeah. coming to, to take a look at it immediately versus stuff that is probably just cosmetic in, 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 in a lot of cases so in yeah. terms of like how to answer your question like how many bridges do i do i would say probably about 10 to 15 a year and that's that's plenty for me well thanks ted um if you're watching this on wednesday uh november 12th that uh, you have time to sign up for our free training that we're doing tomorrow which will be thursday November 13th, Ted's going to come on, talk about the process of how you even put together these 3D models. What's it look like? Again, more use cases, and he's going to walk through some other example projects he had done. So if that is of interest to you, you want to learn more about 3D modeling with drones, there should be a link probably below the video to sign up for that. But Ted, thanks for your time in uh, walking us through a cool bridge scan. My pleasure. Thanks, David. Looking forward to seeing everybody there.